We have all the way from Sweden the wonderful Mr. Håkan Lidbo. Um, Håkan um, has made over 350 records. I will reiterate that for, for you. Um, but in addition to that, Håkan has an experimental side and he's made a great many sound installations um, um, in places like the Swedish Museum of Performing Arts and, and many other places. He designed the world's biggest MIDI controller, which is really big, um, and he works with virtual reality, robotics, all kinds of things. So um, here is our plenary talk, Håkan Lidbo. We're all here because we're interested in the future of music, what it can be except what it already is. I would like to present my work as an artist, uh, but first also talk about a human superpower, which I think is the most poorly exploited natural resource on the planet, namely imagination. If I was the Prime Minister of Sweden, there would be a subject in school called imagination. But I'm, I'm not the Prime Minister, I'm a musician. And when you make music, it's all about imagination. You imagine a sound or a rhythm, melody, and then you bring that to life. As Justin said, I just uh, released more than 350 records. All of them have been a practice in imagination. This is the oldest music instrument found. It's a flute that is 40,000 years old. When you play this flute, it has the same musical scale that we use today to compose most pop songs. So I think music came to us humans at the dawn of humanity. I think music is a part of the human construction. This flute is from a time when we were hunting mammoths and we shared the planet with Neanderthals. They are no longer here. We made them go extinct. The Neanderthals used tools. They had language and brains bigger than ours. But as far as we know, they didn't have art. They didn't have music. Maybe they didn't have our imagination. Are we, the humans, the only ones who can play and enjoy music? So in one of my projects, I gave synthesizers to the monkeys of Stockholm Zoo to see if they had any musical skills. They didn't. <laughs> None whatsoever, they really suck. Maybe music is unique to our civilization, so we sent specially composed music into space from the Swedish space station S-Range. It was transmitted nine years ago as a business card from humanity. So now it's traveled nine light years. Still no reply. So that was another project of mine that failed. But I'm an artist, so my job is not to succeed or to find the answers. My job is to ask the questions. Imagination, creativity, innovation. Why, some people get a lot of new ideas. Some people can't even imagine that the world is changing. Everything evolves all the time. New ideas develop from old ideas, maybe except for crocodiles and bicycles, because the design was pretty good from the start. But almost everything else could be and will be much better than it is today. We just have to imagine. The first car, for example, they were really crap. Now they're better. Old computers, really bad. We cannot even imagine what a computer can do and what a computer will be in 20 years from now. And of course, music. Take rock and roll. When it first was invented, people said, oh man, this is so fast, this is so hard and aggressive. 20 years later, people said, oh man, oh, this is, this is so aggressive, this is really hard music. This is an example of rock and roll today, music style called grindcore. And believe me, in a few years, people will say, oh, this music is just slow, it's just soft and harmless. Because things change. Music that used to be a piece of plastic that you bought in a record store for like 20 euro, now it's something like tap water. You expect to get it anywhere, as much as you want, and almost for free. Recording music was something for very few. Today is very different. That's a change that took less than 20 years. 20 years from now, music will be complete, something completely different from what it is today. I don't know what. And we are changing. We're merging with technology, digitally and globally connected, soon with the ability to extend our senses beyond human senses. We're even transforming into a new species. A few thousand years ago, who would have guessed that we, the naked ape, would take over the planet? Replacing nature with human civilization, and this is just the beginning. 
How come that so many of us don't see this? It's because of the way our brain works. We see the present and we can remember the past, but the new human also needs to imagine the future because lack of imagination can be dangerous. Remember these guys? No art, no music, not so much ima imagination, and you know what happened to them. The human brain is a lump of fat trapped in complete silence and darkness, trying to make sense of whatever input it gets. The brain of a newborn baby is empty. It knows absolutely nothing, but it learns extremely fast. So through our lives, we build an inner world that is all we have seen, all we have experienced, and all we have felt. That is us. When we experience something, we don't really process so much of the input that we get. We rather compare it with what we already know inside. So we see something, most of what we experience, the feeling of being here, is not coming from the outside in. It's coming from our inner world. Sometimes we are challenged and experience something that doesn't quite make sense. Something that, it, that is not yet inside our inner world. First we feel confused, but it's actually really good for us. This is the purpose of art, and the most important purpose of music. It's natural for us to believe only what we see or hear. That's how we are built. We used to see the horizon in all directions, and the stars seemed to glued like a dome uh, on the sky. Okay, then the earth, earth must look something like this. But in order to look at the problem from the outside, from a place where we are not yet, we need a lot of imagination. So is this how we should look at the future of music? It won't be easy, but we can do it. This was a school a few hundred years ago, and a school of today. Is this the best school we can imagine? This is a residential house from ancient Rome, and a newly built house that actually won awards 2,000 years later. I'm not an architect, but I'm thinking, is this the best we can do? Are the cities that we have and the ones we're building are they the best we can imagine? Modern democracy means that we can choose between a few different predefined sets of opinions. And every few years, we put a piece of paper in a box. They did that 2,500 years ago. Is that the best system we can imagine? This is how our free economy distributes wealth. We can describe it like this. If we want a free market where business and people can prosper and be free, is this the best we can imagine? These are directed boards from different companies that do different things that are within banking and creative businesses, but why do they all look the same? In the world of music, it's much easier. You can see that these guys like hip-hop. These guys like black metal. These girls like Japanese pop. Now, I'm not saying that the boards of companies should dress like that, but it's, it's far more creative, isn't it? This was the structure of power in ancient Egypt, like 5,000 years ago. This is the structure of armies. This is the structure of most big corporations. You start working at a company, full of ideas how things could improve, but everyone tells you that a few you know, plans and ideas, they come from above. We here in the warehouse, we don't uh, come up with ideas. It's not our job. So you move up in the organization, not because of your new ideas, but because you do your part of the job. You accept the new plans, and ideas come from the top. So one day, your loyalty has brought you to the very top, you become the CEO, and you have totally run out of ideas because they have never been promoted. So the very structure of our companies kill innovation. Are the universities much different? When kids find a stick, they can imagine it to be anything. When they play, it could be a spaceship or a lightsaber or a snake, but then we grow up and we just see a stick. It's kind of sad, isn't it? So the education system that we have built, are they like fun-packed adventure of imagination or a certificate that you can sit still and do as you're told for 10 years and then you can qualify for a lot of jobs? Our societies, organization, they are in fact based on a structure of all dictatorships, armies. I'm not so sure we built the best environment for, for creativity and innovation. Sometimes a bad environment, a crisis, could be the motivation for new innovations, like global war or space race. But very often, 
New disruptive ideas come from play, from having fun, and from music. When the church organ was developed into the first self-playing instrument, then the very first programming code was invented a few hundred years ago. And that made it possible to build the first programmable machines, and that started the Industrial Revolution. And the mechanics from another instrument, the harpsichord, became the typewriter. So technologies coming from music instruments became the computer and changed the world. This is one of the guys that received the Nobel Prize in chemistry for this new amazing material, graphene, that is only one carbon atom in thickness. The project his team did before starting working on graphene was the levitating frog. They proved that if you generate a magnetic field that is strong enough, a living frog become magnetic and float in midair. It's not very practical, but it is very cool. This is an early game for Amiga computer from the 80s. It's not so impressive, right? Music is not so bad, but still. The guy who built this game later came up with better and better ideas like PayPal, Tesla Motors, and SpaceX. His name is Elon Musk. So these are the questions that I'm interested in. What is music? Where do those melodies and rhythms come from? And what are the me mechanisms behind creativity? How can we improve our idea-making skills? Because I'm convinced it is a matter of training. Many of my projects are designed to force you to non-linear thinking, like a combination of chess on a Rubik's Cube, or another very difficult labyrinth game. Another project is a game where you have to come up with a totally new idea in three minutes and pitch it to the other players in one minute. It's called Makanatsu. Google that. This is a machine where you generate big questions about the future and about humanity. And at the same time, you generate music by flipping these three cubes. So the first part of the question plays the drums and the bass and then the melody. So the question becomes music. We go to seminars to hear people talk about creativity, like I'm doing right now. But does it make you more creative? To me, it's like reading a book about how to lose weight. I mean, you have to exercise in order to lo lose weight, right? So we have to practice creativity by being creative and practice innovation skills by making innovations. So me and my colleagues are making training camps for those who want to improve their idea-making skills. And I'm trying to observe my own creative process. Where do the ideas come from and under what circumstances? For example, I did an app that transforms any sound into funky music in less than a second. And you do that by moving and flipping colored blocks. So this app gave inspiration to more and more ideas. It became a car ballet, or was made, was originally thought of as a, as a real life car ballet at Tempelhof Airport. Unfortunately, it just became a virtual ballet. But it also looks a bit like Rubik's Cube. So we made a project where the colors of the cube control six different music instruments. So in order to make any change here, um, it becomes like three-dimensional and very, very complicated. This instrument always sounds good, but it's more complicated to, pro to, to play than the violin, I would say. Or you can play with candy. So you compose a song and then you can eat it. You can change the perspective with these giant inflatable cubes with built-in gyro sensors for mu music control. So instead of me, flipping the cube in the app with my small finger or my big finger, then the cubes become really big and I become really small. So from one idea came many others. And in these projects, I'm asking myself, is this the best I can do? Could it be something else? Can a drum machine be a social meeting place? Can it be a game? Can it bring people together? It can, if it's so big, so you have to make friends in order to make music. Instead of planting a tree outside the new concert hall of the city of Malmö in south of Sweden, can a tree be listening to when you play on it? Can it learn from you and play back its own music? This one can do that. This is music sculpture. You play it by touching different areas of the sculpture and then each other's skin. And it was developed in collaboration with different groups of disabled kids. We made a tennis game for blind people or seeing people with blindfolds. You play with sounds and music instead of a ball. The idea is that people with disabilities sometimes can develop a superpower 
So this is a game where blind are much better players because they have super hearing. The boring entrance at Deutsche Telekom's head office becomes a collaborative music instrument to make people behave differently. Inspired by working with disabled people, we build superhero costume. They block out one sense and replace it with the non-human super sense. This is a helmet that makes you blind, but there are parking sensors in all directions, connected to vibration motors inside the helmet, and that gives you 360 degree uh, vision, but with vibration. This superhero can listen to people far away with this directional microphone connected to headphones inside the helmet and talk to people far away through the microphone and connected through this super directional loudspeaker in the glove. Not very practical, but it is it's another sense. Music controlled by brain waves. The system reads the alpha waves or the theta waves of the brain when you are relaxed or focused. So you make musical choices when you're passing these portals. This is a new building called NUD in Shista. Me and some students from the Royal School of Technology transformed it into the world's biggest online game. Singing tunnels. It's a system that transforms ugly and scary pedestrian tunnels into creative meeting places. You sing a note in the tunnel, and they sing back the same note, but with a beautiful choir. And they're also self-learning, so they remember all the notes that everyone has sung. And when no human is singing, sometimes it sings its own melody based on all those notes. So each tunnel develops a unique musical dialect depending on the people that pass it. Here we're testing a musical storefront window. The idea is that if you measure where visitors and tourists put their eye when they're walking through the city, a big part of that are storefront windows. But the local store owners, they don't have any visual training or anything like that, so they just want to put whatever merchandising they have. But we, we want to start a price in Stockholm for the most uh, artistic, most beautiful, most in innovative uh, storefront window. And we think that could be an effective way to improve the face of the city. Last summer, when Stockholm was hosting Eurovision final, I modified the crosswalks in the city, so they playing these clicking boxes played music instead of uh, just clicking. We're doing tests to see if the pavements can become pressure sensors and musical instruments. We're building internet of sounds instead of Internet of Things. So the sounds of the object in your home become digital controllers. So the, the objects you already have become digital controllers. So we don't have to buy more and more smart single function devices to put in our, in our homes. So Internet of Sounds can be for fun or as a tool for safety. We built a synth that is so big that you need two, three people to play on it. A music game for very small children, like the first puzzle that we get, putting a triangle in the triangle hole and the circle in the circle and so forth. But as this box and uh, on all, the, all the blocks have connectors, we will know which block on which side and how it's twisted. So it makes it a very complex algorithmic composing machine for children that are only a few months old. This game for iPad is like playing chess on ice. The pieces never stop moving, but it's also a sequencer. A bar where the guests create music together with the drinks, because music and alcohol has always been a very good combination. But two separate things happen at the same time and place. Now it's merging into one experience. So, I have a co-working space in Stockholm that we call Rumtiden, it means space time. And we're 11 people there right now. People with electronics, prototyping, programming, VR, Filmmaker, uh, music, of course, apps, games, robots, and AI. Um, so we call this place uh, um, Idea Lab. We're totally independent. We trust uh, our ideas. We build first and ask later if you can get some financing. And if we make a project that no one understands, then it's art, right? We're building a DJ tool in VR. It's like DJing with 24 turntables in space. We use your whole body to mix and tweak the loops. So DJing becomes a very physical thing. All big religion mixed into one holy book written by smart algorithms. Since that need different fruits in order to work, the capacity and the humidity of the fruit affect the sound. Since that are clothes, we also do some robot projects. 
This one that I did for a music festival called Volt Festival, and that I was starting uh, quite a few years ago. 25 small robots that can only drive forward. They're very simple, but they're all carrying a sign saying, help, we lost, can you please help us in the right direction? So 24 out of 25 robots made it to the destination. So that was an experiment to see if the uh, robot could trust the um, goodness of people. This is Anna, and she's a robot with built-in disabilities. Would you like to play a game of Pong? Okay, let's go. So she doesn't move very well. She's visually impaired, hearing impaired, she easily gets lost, and she has autism. But unlike other robots, she's very open about the disabilities. It's not easy to be a robot, and I think it's good for us to be aware of that, to prevent possible future robot racism. Because today, we actually make robots to be our slaves. Is that the best we can do? Project search in the internet by making random QR codes. A circular language based on colors. We're building a house, it's a very small house, only three square meters, but you can flip the whole house in four different directions so you get different functions. World's greatest house music EP. Not the best, but the greatest. The, the musical elements are geospecific, so you, can, you have to move around all of Stockholm in order to hear the song. Money with negative value. Think about that. <laughs> We're building worlds by far largest computer game is 385,000 kilometers. Radio amateurs all over Europe that have built their own antenna, they're synchronized to a main server. So one sends a signal to the moon, and the first to pick up the bouncing signal wins the ball. So what I'm interested in are totally new ideas. I started with music, but after making hundreds of records, some pretty good ones, some not that great, but I got fed up with myself. So now I'm looking for what music can be instead of what it already is. In one way, it feels like it's almost like an insult to music and its possibilities for me to make those six minute house tracks or four minute pop songs. What the world needs today and what music needs today is much, much more imagination. 